Welcome to the fish tank, everybody. My name is Bad as Fish AD, and we've got another 1v1 tournament final for you today. We're going to be watching the 1v1 number 21 tournament final between Dragon and Batowski. Now, Dragon reached the final from the winner's bracket, so he's got a second life should he need it. Batowski has reached the final from the redemption bracket in this dual elimination format tournament, uh, so he doesn't have a second life. He has already used it. Now, I am not on my own. We are live on Twitch and we are joined by the legendary Death Shot Wanioni. Deadshot, welcome. Hello. How are you I doing, my friend? I am good. I'm good. Would you like Looking to tell to these Would you like to tell everybody out there just a little bit about you and your experience with Minion Masters? I've been playing since October 2018. I'm consistently, I've never really taken a step away from the game. So I guess you could say I've been addicted to it for a long time. And uh, I'd like tournaments. Yeah, that's it. Not only do you like tournaments, you like doing very well in tournaments. Yeah, I, would that I be get fair decent to say? Placement. Decent placements. I, decent, you know, you've, you've occasional. Won. You've won some of the big money tournaments for sure. You've won lots of my tournaments. Yeah. Um, and uh, would it be fair to say that you are more of a 1v1 player than a 2v2 player? Yeah, definitely. I joined a Fish 2v2 tourney when they first started, and I won one of those with Set, but it has been a long time since I've done much in those. And also, interestingly, you were in this tournament. Am I correct? That's right, yes. And tell us I... what happens. I ended in third, which is sort of a meme for me. I've been doing that for a long time, back when, back in 2019, in previous wow. tournament scenes, constantly ending third. It's a and nice, who, consistent placement. And who were you knocked out by? Batowski, who came from the loser bracket. You want to tell us briefly about what happened in that match? Uh, it was a best of five. First game, he played Brothers of Light, Valorian. I didn't really expect him to do it. He normally prefers King Puff, and we just went back and forth between the games. And then there was a really unfortunate one where he was King Pop with a Spirit Mancer, and I was a Vapo. So that did not go well for me. But uh, they were pretty good games. Okay, and I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with both of these players. I'm sure you played them a lot, both in tournaments and on ladder. Um, this is yeah. this is going to be a best of five, as we said, and it's also going to be a, a dual elimination. Now the bands, Dragon has banned Apep and KP, and now. KP is an unusual ban, but it's uh, he feels that Batowski is one of the best KP players out there, so he's specifically banned KP. Um, and Batowski, on the opposite side, has banned Milo and Mordar. So Milloween and Mordar banned for Batowski, uh, for Dragon, I should say. So how do you yeah. how do you feel about those bans? Well, King Puff was definitely a target ban for Batowski, probably also because I expect to see Brothers of Light in here and King Puff can do pretty well versus that because of the shields it just makes it to a, it's a lot easier to deal with the uh, minions and Batowski though he didn't ban Apep who um, has been the dominating tournament master for months possibly over a year so we're probably going to see him coming out from Dragon at least once depends on if Batowski's going to do mind games, because he might have purposely avoided banning Apep to make Dragon play Apep, and then we'll see what he does in return. So this might be a case of it's more important not what was banned, but what wasn't banned. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, just to clarify in the chat, or anyone watching, KP is King Puff. So that means Dragon uh, Dragon bans AP, uh, Apep and King Puff, but remember, his opponent can play those. And Batowski bans Milloween and Mordar, so he can play those, but again, Dragon can't. Okay, hold on. I just need to check my Discord. Apparently, it's important. Hey, guys. How you doing, chat? How you two? Um, I can't do that right now, I'm afraid, Miguel. I need to find out what's going on with that. Right, okay. So, we're about to get loaded into game number one. We are going to be using our dual deck technology. So, you can see both players' hands. Um, so, let's get ready for game number one. Are you queued up for game number one, Mr. Deadshot? It is now loading up. Okay, so what I'm going to need you to do is go into the game, get to zero seconds, and pause it, please. Okay. And then I'll give us a t countdown. Three, two, one, go. And we shall go. Now, just while we get in set up, if you haven't uh, seen our tournaments before, in the fish tank we have a 1v1 and a 2v2 tournament every month. They are supported by Beta Dwarf. There is money to be won. 
lots of in-game content, also a lot of fun to be had, um, and also a lot to be learned. Um, so if you want to get involved, anybody of any experience, any level, is more than welcome to join. Lots of people having fun out there. So consider it, drop by the stream, Discord, etc., um, and get involved. Do you want I'll, me to spectate a specific person? I'll be uh, spectating dragons. So if you want to see Batowski, that's probably the best thing to set. Okay, I'm flipping it around. We flip it around, get to zero seconds, pause it, and then we're ready to go. Okay, ready okay. when you are. Let's get ready to go. We're going to be loading into game number one. Just to remind you, this is Dragon versus Batowski. One thing I didn't do, actually, if anyone in the chat can message Dragon or Batowski to let them know we're watching, that'll be great. Kind of didn't uh, think of it. Uh, Batowski is uh, somebody that we've definitely heard of, Helade. He's a very good player. Seen him a lot on the ladder. And as we mentioned, he's a very good King Puff player. He's relatively new to tournaments, but he's been consistently placing top 8 and even almost made top 8 in the last GG Tour tournament. But yeah, so clearly, clearly a very good player. And maybe with some more tournament experience, he can get even better. Because as we've spoken about many times before, tournaments, it's not about just playing the right deck and playing it well. It's about the mind games of knowing what to ban and, you know, how to how to approach the games with your opponent. And uh, if things start not going so well in the games, how to uh, try to, uh, to center yourself and come back. Okay, so let's get ready for game number one. We're going to get in there in three, two, one, and go. Okay. All right. Okay. Take us away, Deadshot. He has a bit of an awkward starting hand. He's got his spells, Brutish Betrayer, and Last Legionnaire. So he only has one card he can start with. Okay, so we've got Dragon playing Apep. As we spoke about, Apep wasn't banned, surprisingly, by Batowski. So Dragon said, thank you very much. Let me grab some yeah. Apep action. Early on, there's another batch. you got to time that correctly, or they'll just jump away and you won't keep the bridge. Okay. So Batowski playing Valorian, brother Valorian. Yeah, so that's going to be some heavy units for Dragon to try to deal with. A very difficult minion to answer. Because of their AoE, it makes sure you can't answer with Horde without timing it correctly, and they do a ton of damage. That's right. If you see them shining, that means their shield's ready to pop. Their, their explosion that kills all the scrats and stuff around them. So you've got to pay attention to that. Boom Buggy is a very nice answer. Batowski will be able to take it out with his perk too once he gets it, Searing Light. But until then, he's going to have to try and answer it with Shock Rock and Fireball, but that's a six mana commitment in both of his spells. The first perk for Dragon was a Grenadier. He's already got that's one. It's a very good one to get. Because he wants that. That's a very nice counter carry to Brothers. They're so slow that you can kind of just protect the Grenadier and you'll do a consistent amount of AoE damage to both of them. And of course, being the ranged unit, he can set the shields off um, from the Brothers of Light. Shield's not really the right word, but uh, I'm sure you'll correct me. Armor of Light. Armor of Light, that's it. Okay, yeah. so... Rama Double being Grenadier. A... Rama is a nice... That's a brutish Betrayer, so he's taken face damage from that. The wall, of course, tanking most of the damage. Dragon almost has his perk too, which he can't fully rely on, because if he uses that for total defense, then Batowski can just spell it down and you'll take a, t a ton of base damage. But it's still a very defensive tool that should make handling the rammer much easier. Yeah, it's definitely the shield in Apep that's one of the things that makes him very strong. And we're going to see here if, uh, overall, if Batowski made the mistake of not banning Apep. He didn't seem to pick a specific deck to counter Apep. I think he just figured that Brothers is a very strong deck in general, and he's going to rely on that to see if he can overpower the Apep, but it's not working so far. Big XP lead for the blue team right now. It's going to be a problem. No, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, does Dragon have a Lash of Amon in hand right now? He does, yeah. I think that Dragon predicted Batowski going Brothers, and that's why he has Lash and Boom Buggy. I think those are both very strong characters to answer Brothers, and I think we're going to see Lash played right here because the Brothers did not get split. Okay, yep, boom. there it is. And that Lash is going to do two lots of 200 damage, absolutely shreds through, uses the shield as uh, a tank there. The Rammer's going to come in. Brutish Betrayer is going to get some face damage, though. Nice clear on the ball. Boom Buggy. That's a but lot is he of. Not a ball hand? No. His wall oh, wow. is not ready yet. His wall is his next card. 
It was beneficial then for Patowski because he wants face damage. He's not going to win an XP. So being able to get Rambo off successfully is very good for him. Yeah, if he sends that Rambo in and it gets just countered without doing any face damage. And of course the Blood Pack doing damage back to himself. That's going to be a very bad spot for him to be in. He now knows that Dragon has Whip, so he, or Lash, I mean. So that means he's probably going to consistently split his brothers, because placing them together is just asking for them to be uh, severely damaged by Lash. Yeah, that Lash hurts. For sure. Okay, so let's have a look. XP, 104 for the blue team, 91 for the red team. Quite a difference. We'll see what Perk 3 does. It could be very impactful. It could be something not very helpful, like Undying Skeleton. So yeah, perk 3, Apep, Dragon, Blue Team is going to get a, a free 4 mana card. A random 4 mana card. Let's see what it is. Double Grenadier. It's a very good, very good carry to pull in this matchup. Oh, and there, got... he did not split him. He's got a Bounty oh, Sniper. Some oh, bounty more range. Sniper. Could be helpful. Didn't split his brothers, and once again he got punished for it. That's pretty risky. Hey, Bounty Sniper being removed. He knows he needs to remove that because he's already far behind on XP. It was bad value, though. He spent his one mana perk two for a free perk three. So it's good value for Dragon, even though he did need to stop that. To stop the XP from coming in. Yeah, not only that, he's forcing him to use the, the Searing Light just to remove one unit. It's not doing a lot of damage to many units. It's just simply removing one unit. It's not getting its full value at all. It gives his boom buggy safety from the Searing Light to get that Bounty Sniper in his deck. Because now he has two targets for Searing Light. Here we see again, straight away, massive damage on those brothers. And he's not splitting them. Do you think that's just a yeah. mistake? Is he not thinking that he needs to do that? Yeah, I think he needs to adapt more here. He's uh, missing out. Even though they're technically weaker when they're separate, I think it still gives him a better chance of utilizing the push. Yeah. Here he gets perk 3 though. So that Searing Light's way stronger. Okay, so Dragon's still big XP lead. Has taken some face damage, but of course he does have that shield. Alright, Boom Buggy's just being played, I'm guessing, for mana reasons. But it did. It is going to do nicely here. He's going to have his own mini push. And that might be able to help him keep XP, because pushing is a way to keep XP on the bridges. As long as you're like pushing the enemy, they can't really focus on the bridges that much. So you're technically playing bridge control just by being aggressive if you can do it well. Here comes the Rammer, but he's going to get shut down. The shield removed, though. Here we go. Rammer's going to hit him. reaction. Oh, the wall, though, saves a hit. That's very nice. The wall there being able to push the Rammer back. Tanks one of the Rammer hits. Boom buggy getting just shredded there by the Searing Light. Two hits, and it's dead. Very nicely placed. So that searing light that was what hit, he wanted. That will hit random targets, so you do need to place it appropriately. He got both the searing light targets with Oof. one searing light. That was huge value. Again, more face damage. damage. It's getting close though. Dragon's only around 12 XP away from Mana Frenzy. Do you feel like he will be able to close this out if he hits the Mana Frenzy? Yeah, he, uh, I don't think that Patowski's done enough damage to do one final push. He's not going to be able to, like, inch out the win with spells or with rammers. We'll see, though. Shield's up. Rammer coming in. Oh. We've, we've seen spells on the shield before. There we go. That's nicely timed on that shield, though. That rammer's going to get two hit. hits in. Fireball as well. Okay, Mana Frenzy for Dragon, but 285 HP left. Can't be tanky anymore. If Dragon anymore. didn't have wall, then Patowski could still get through with Rammer. But since Dragon also has wall in his deck, I don't think that Patowski's going to be able to inch out the win. Patowski just needs to stay in this and get his own Mana Frenzy, and then he'll have a chance. And That's... Valorian does have very good defense, because when you use his perk 2, unlike masters like Vector Setsu, he still attacks on the Master Tower. So you can technically have two Master Attacks going at the same time. And he hits hard. Here we go, fireball yeah, blocked by the shield. Deadshot needs to, uh, sorry, your Deadshot, Dragon, I needs did. to be needs to be ready to react to that at a moment's notice. The good news is the fireball is relatively easy to react to. It gives you a lot of time. There we go. Game no, number one game. goes to Dragon. One game.
to zero. Apep just being too strong ultimately there. That's the Stream Raiders noise. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, we are live on Twitch right now. Uh, so if you do see us talking to somebody that's not here, then we're probably talking to the chat. Now, one of the things we're going to do, which we haven't done before, is we're going to talk about the decks that they used. So we'll bring this up on the screen here. And we just have a quick look at the decks. Let's just update the scores. So this is best of five. One, two, zero. Okay. So here we see the decks that they used. Dragon with his Lash and his, his uh, Boom Buggy. And then we see Batowski uh, with the Brothers the, and the, the Brutish, etc. Yeah. So what do you feel? Did, did that game, if you'd looked at these decks before the game, did that game pan out in a way that you would have expected it to? Definitely. I think that Dragon is still the more experienced player. Batowski hasn't been playing for that long, only a few months, maybe near in a year. And Dragon predicted that Batowski was going to play Brothers. There's no other reason he would have put Lash in there. And Boom Buggy was definitely a counter pick as well. Wall was just a general card in general, a good card in general, but it's still a counter to the Buddhist Betrayer. And Curse Bear was probably in there just in case Batowski went for some other type of giant minion. And, and where would you expect this uh, these decks to go now? If Dragon, in, from what I've in noticed position. in the past, mm -hmm. I think Dragon is still going to stay on APEP. Because from what I've noticed in past tournaments, he'll stick on APEP when he doesn't get banned. He'll just keep playing him until he loses with APEP. Because APEP is the tournament master. He's the champion of them all. And Batowski's definitely going to switch things up. There's no way he'd stick on the same deck after seeing that Dragon built a counter deck to what he was playing. Okay. Right, so let's get set up for game number two just a reminder this is best of five okay let's just double check that this is the right one dun, dun, dun. okay so just to confirm what's what's going to happen this is a best of five if dragon loses then because he hasn't lost a game in the tournament yet he does have his second life so then we'll switch and we'll do a second best of five uh, if Batowski loses this best of five then he's already used his second life um, and that will be the end of the road for him. Okay, so let's get ready to I'm get loaded in. Okay, so you're zero seconds on Batowski, right? Yep. Okay. Let me just set this up, and then we'll get ready to go. So yeah, the, showing the, the decks that the people are using, the players are using, hopefully you guys enjoy that. That's a new thing that we've added to this broadcast that we haven't done before. Hopefully that's useful for you guys to, to see exactly what was played. Okay. Switch these round. Okay, so we've got... Okay, so we just have to set up the game twice and then we'll be ready to go. Right. Right, that's one game set up, and here comes the second game. Okay. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the tournament stuff. Again, if you if you want to get involved, there's always tournaments running, so make sure you do. Okay. We are going to go into game number two. Just a reminder, Dragon has taken the first game, Apep against Valorian. We're going to go into game number two and see exactly where we're going to be going now. Okay, let's get our countdown going for Mr. Deadshot. We are three, two, one and go all right once again uh dragon is on apep which i expected and uh Batowski switched to M Meloween, who i think is also one of the strongest masters right now it's a, it's a good idea because his perk 2 arcane missiles is sort of a counter to the totem it's uh, a free spell for a free building and it almost instantly takes it out if he's still playing the same aggressive deck anyways, I haven't seen his full hand yet. Very cheap. Okay. Dragon looks like he's staying exactly with the same the same deck. We'll see what free card he gets for perk one. That can give us an idea of how he's gonna go. But we've got some early bridge control here, using the spells to clear for Batowski. Batowski did not play brothers, he fully took them out. So does Dragon still have Lash? Uh, yes, he does. 
so that could that's be a, gonna be a, a much yeah. weaker card in this matchup yeah remember you've got to be able to use the cards as mono efficiently as possible sometimes if there's very little use for it then you need to be careful there, like there's the no cards inside Batowski's deck that are over five mana the closest is assassin at four mana so lash is gonna have to be very well timed with multiple minions if dragon wants to get any valuable usage out of it yeah he's definitely gonna want to go for the uh the golem especially when it gets charged up but of course he's going to want to hit more as well because that's a two for five trade yeah pincer of dread and that a counter boom buggy now in this matchup batowski did the counter deck building dragon stayed on the exact same deck and batowski was like okay i'll switch it up and now he had say i don't know if he has the advantage but he's a lot more he's a way better chance in this match than he did in the first one okay so crossbow dudes with a free card for apep from perk one Going to give him some extra anti-air, some extra range, and some extra bridge split and control. Could have played that Swarmer earlier to keep the bridge. In one of your YouTube videos you talked about that, how you want to stop them from taking the bridge so it doesn't disrupt your flow of XP. You could have done that a bit earlier and it wouldn't have stopped his bridge control. That's right. Sometimes you just engage the, the range so they don't get on the bridge and it stays your controlled bridge the whole time. Just these small things. But XP's in Apep's favor, as uh, we probably would expect. Yeah. Not far behind for Batowski, though. Once he gets his perk 2, I think he'll be better than Dragon's perk 2 because Batowski's not playing nearly as much of an aggressive game. He doesn't have a much of a push going besides his perk 2 and just stacking general minions. Nothing meant to push. He used the arcane, uh, sorry, the, the resonating blast crystal there. Did he really hit anything with it? I kind of glanced away and I kind of glanced away and looked back and it seemed to pop twice and it didn't seem to really do much. I know I used it on Plasma Marines earlier, but you know, well, we, we pay attention to things, but yeah, we're good. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we get at least 50% of the stuff. Yeah. He could do fear on that top Plasma Marine, and it would send the bottom one running to death, and it would have kept on the top bridge. One of the things about Pincer of Dread is the fear mechanic is super important, because even though using it on one Plasma Marine is not worth it, that Plasma Marine is then feared and can't do anything. So yeah. that can mean that you're easily winning interaction versus it. Yeah, it's almost like a stun where they're just running around. Yeah, same, well, that, same uh, length as stun blast, five seconds. That wall was very nice, but there you go. Shockrock and Pinsa takes out the boom buggy. Nice trade. Elite Swarmer is a very good 1v1 card lately. It has 250 health. In 2v2, it's more chaotic of a situation than 1v1. So it's not as good there, but you can win a lot of trades with it in 1v1 versus smaller minions. They're both playing it. Okay, so he's using the Curse Bearer there. That's going to bring the Assassin out of stealth so the Assassin doesn't get the big hit and the Curse Bearer will trade against it. Curse Bearer Dragon, really good against many things. Dragon is maintaining the small XP lead. Nothing major, but he does have that little edge that could be important when it compares perk 3s, when you compare perk 3s. Yeah, we've also when seen... He gets his... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, when he gets his perk 3, uh, that's going to be a lot more important than when Batowski gets his perk 3, because we know what Batowski's getting. He's getting that level 5 Golem, but we don't know what Dragon's getting. That's going to be a tie turner in this match if he gets something bad, and a tie turner if he gets something good. Yeah, and as I was going to say, if we if we get to a Mana Frenzy situation, just getting to the Mana Frenzy slightly ahead of your opponent can just... That can just be all you need to solidify your position in the game and, and close it out. Just, just a little... Just those few seconds where you can get the bridge, get that extra Mana... Get your units into a position, and then uh, there's just no way back for your opponent. Yeah. And I'd say that when we get to Mana Frenzy, Dragon probably is a lead, because the Arcane Golem is on a timer. You get it every 30 seconds after you've played it. So it doesn't get benefit. It doesn't benefit from a fast cycle. So when we get into Mana Frenzy, all of Dragon's perks are going to be cycling, but Vitalski still has to wait 30 seconds to get his Golem. Now, the free card there is the Tranquil Shishao. Uh, which a very I, solid tank. I believe is one of your favorite cards. I see you Definitely. playing that a lot. He will heal himself if he gets out of combat, which can be... If he heals himself up from almost nothing, it's almost like getting a free unit for, your, for yourself. It was a super defensive pull, which might not be what Dragon wants, because I think he wanted something more aggressive to deal with the Arcane Golem. But Tranquil, like you said, it, it can get that super good value by healing up after a fight. So that might benefit him in this match. There we see the Lash. Okay. I don't now. think it's going to take it out. Yeah, it lived. And one of the interesting things about the Lash is, although it's a spell, it does it because it does bring down the unit 
it effectively um, you can it can interact you can tank with the unit so you can you know if you're going to get the most value out of that you want it to do damage and soak as much damage as possible there's also counterplay for the opponent they could stun your if you play stun blast on lash and you could probably stop both hits from getting off and right here you saw batowski counter it with spells there we go and you get one hidden 610 hp for batowski low hp xp is slightly in his favor now we see the stint grabbing the top bridge momentarily so when you take a bridge very interesting. A... sorry yep go ahead <laughs> very interesting that Fatalski is the one behind an hp he's the mellowing and dragon's the apep but right now the roles are reversed and he has the xp lead while dragon has the hp lead so one thing i was going to say is that once you take a bridge it starts a counter and you've got to get up to four seconds before it drops um any experience for you so sometimes yep. you can pay attention to that and if you can just stop that counter before that four seconds expires you can prevent your opponent from getting any use from holding that bridge but here we see boom buggy and wall doing a great job but still the man the xp lead for the red team yeah batowski's done a great job with his spells he's very focused instantly reacting he's not panicking at all at least not what i see So, do you expect this to go to Mana Frenzy at this point? Oh, definitely. Uh, Dragon's lost his momentum. He won't be able to push through before Mana Frenzy unless Batowski makes a mistake. That's what I think. He needs to get these bridges. That's a good push he has at the top bridge. But Batowski does have Assassin in hand for the... Uh... Oh, he played in the very back there. I think that was unwise. He could have instantly taken out the Boom Buggy. Hey. Here we go. He's used his stun, though, so he doesn't have the stun available to shut down. Can he stop the second hit? Yes, he can. Just stops the second hit, but this, this could be too much on the face right now. Oh. Mono Frenzy about to oh, hit for the red sick. team. But suddenly... What does uh, Dragon have for spells? Um, he has the Lash, and that could be it. Which, of course, the Lash That's doesn't... 40 face damage. Doesn't do much face damage. It's just the Lash, I think. Yeah. We earn Frenzy. Okay, Frenzy for red frenzy for blue here we go now it's gonna get hectic very Again. bad value on lash of a mod. it's not doing anything this no, match it's, it's either getting one or no hits that's a problem okay now Dragon's dragon gonna... can let him push in because he has such an hp lead but he needs to make sure that batowski doesn't overwhelm him with mana from the uh, mana frenzy he needs to contest the bridges yeah as we always say, health is a resource. Don't be afraid to use it. Right. That's what you see the top players do. And now here's the momentum, because he kind of built up a counter push from defending. So now uh, Batalski has to try and recover, and I don't think he can because, like we talked about earlier with the perks, oh, he's going for Jack face. Perk damage. That's it. That is two games to nil. Apep, Dragon's Apep too strong, beating the Valorian and the Milloween so far of Batalski. A close one. Um, but Dragon, as you say, he defended, and then once the defense was done, he was able to then push with the units that he'd spawned. His opponent didn't really have any units since they'd died in the attack, and then it was just too much and overwhelmed him. But, again, a very high-quality game from both players, and we should, very be good to, game play. we should be able to check the decks again. So Dragon, um, was Dragon playing exactly the same deck? I think he was. Um, no and, of course, and, of course, Batowski played a very different deck, a very a relatively cheap cycle Milloween deck. Um, and as you alluded to in that game, the Milloween perk is on uh, is on a timer, so you, you aren't forced into having a cheap or a more expensive deck to, to build around that, so you don't need to cycle to it. Um, so uh, if we just recap that game, how do you feel, again, looking at the decks, how do you feel the game uh, transpired. Do you, did you think Dragon would have been expecting to win that with that, this matchup of, uh, of decks? Even with the timer, the the timer on Arcane Golem, you still get benefits for Arcane Missiles, her perk two, by having a super cheap deck. And he even had a cheaper deck than a uh, Apep Dragon did at two point seven. That's one of the cheapest decks you have uh, nowadays. And as for the matchup itself. I think that Dragon still had sort of an advantage because they're both playing the lawn game. They're both playing the mana frenzy here. But Dragon, Apep is just better in that uh, sort of scenario. His perks are cycled and you can get a ton of value. He technically gets six free mana every cycle from his perk one and three. 
And I think that benefits him more than getting a golem every 30 seconds from Batowski. Lash was horrific in this match. It didn't do anything. Well, I'm not going to say that. But it, most of the time, it died with only getting one hit in. And he's spending five mana versus the Arcane Golem, which is two mana. So that puts him down three mana and for only one hit. But he did a great job defending. And one of the biggest things in Mana Frenzy is counter pushing. Even though the opponent is the one who has the lead, if you build up a push versus what they're trying to do offensively, then suddenly you're the one pushing forward and they can't defend your push that you were just trying to defend versus what they were doing. So now you have the bridges and, and this big push and they just can't recover. Yeah, you see that a lot where people spawn defensively, as you say, they soak the damage, they use their master to help with the defense and then they push on. And of course, they've already got their defensive units ready and then they've got the, uh, the more units to, to support the attack. Um, and that's, as you say, that's exactly what happened there. Dragon defending for his life, had the HP so he could uh, he could soak that on his face, had the shield, was able to uh, to ride out the defense, and then once he was able to then put his own push together. But as you very importantly said, um, one of the things, one of the keys is whilst you're defending like that, you still want to be contesting the bridges. Because uh, if you're defending like that and you don't have the bridges, then the chances are your opponent's just going to keep pushing and pushing. Um, so that's yeah. where the that's where the bridge control comes in, incredibly important. Okay, game number two. Where do you expect? Uh, what, what, what masters do you expect we're going to see here? Well, Dragon has yet to lose on APEP, so I think he's going to go APEP again for game three. But I do expect him to make changes to the deck because now he knows that Batalski's changing his deck. Batalski was the one who did the counter deck building, so to speak, but making it to a lash didn't have a great target. And I think the Dragon's going to be still playing APEP, but more of a general APEP deck, not something so specific for Brothers. Okay, interesting. Right, well, there's one way to find out. We can load in. Remember, this is best of five. T currently two games to nil uh, to Dragon. If he takes this game, he takes the entire best of five and the tournament. Um, and yes, as Planky says, um, although the he was using the Lash and it was getting countered, he was forcing his opponent to... Uh, to to utilize a lot of his mana and spells uh, to restrict the damage that that Lash could do. So that kind of minimized the damage that he was uh, he was encountering for having to spend five mana and not killing the targets that he wanted. Yeah, he was usually spending a Shark Rock in his Arcane Missiles, but on the, on the flip side, that's helping Arcane Golem stack up, which isn't something major, but it's just giving him an opportunity to stack his Golem up more for offense. And you don't want to stall the golems. That's something I think is important. Because if you stall golems and the opponent's able to get two built up on their side of the arena, then it's so pressuring and you can have a hard time defending that. Yeah, and of course, every time they use a spell, both of them are leveling up. So they're getting even more value for, for everything they're doing in the game. Okay, let's get ready for game number three. Are you ready to go, sir? I am. Perfect. Okay, here we go, guys. We're loading into the final game of this best of five, maybe... Let's find out. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. All right. Looks like Batowski also changed up what he was playing. A very good bridge control starting hand. Okay, so Apep again against Milloween. Yeah, still Milloween, but definitely a different deck. He has Ravenous Swarmers in here. I wonder what he's expecting those to do good against. It could be the Boom Buggy, but... Maybe just as a general Milloween character, because Milloween runs a lot of spells. Yeah, they are very high DPS units, but of course they are weak. So, But, if, but Apep does attack pretty slowly, so they can get some good value on face. Still playing Boom Buggy, so that's probably good for Batalski. I think that he was ready for Boom Buggy. Oh, Batalski though. He went back to Brothers. Does Dragon still have Lash? He does. Oh, that's going to be rough. He has to split them, but he might not know the first time. Yep. Well, we saw in the first game, he, he knew he had to split them after the first time, and he's continued yeah. to, to keep them together. So it'll be interesting to see here. But see, that's huge value. Almost killing Demolished. both of them. Demolish is the correct phrase. And now Dragon has probably a mana lead as well as an XP lead, and not really a health lead, but that's not very relevant right now. Yeah, he's going to have to force his opponent to to do something. Batowski knows he's up against it with that Lash just countering those brothers so hard. He has a hand of all spells right now. There's one of them. He has Black Hole as well. I don't really know why he chose Black Hole, because it's not a very good Lash counter. 
So it might be a, be a dead cat in this matchup, we'll see. Do you feel like he's regretting not banning Apep at this moment? I think you could say he learned his lesson. You know, you don't want to face Apep in tournaments. Yeah, one thing we it... must not forget is the Dragon is very experienced in tournament play. Yeah, Dragon's been around for over a year. I want to say it's been almost two years since he started playing the game. It feels and a long you time. never. You never want to face Apep on a veteran. On on other players, not trying to target anyone, just saying that like on on in regular matchups you can sometimes overwhelm a player. Like maybe they'll panic play their totem or not know how to use their free carriage correctly. But versus experienced players, you'll never really get those free advantages. They'll always play correctly. And so you, you never want to face an Apep who's gonna do everything right. Okay, so here come the brothers. Lash, he did split them, so he did learn his lesson, but he's going to split them, and there's, but there's always going to be a golem with one of them, so that's always going to have these potential for a great Lash. Yeah, he is a decent, H uh, well, not decent HP lead, but he could get more and more of an HP lead if he pushes correctly. This one was fully stopped, it's but he big, does a huge drop. It's a big XP lead now for Dragon, though. Yeah. Batowski has on Holy Ground and not many good targets for it. It's mostly just going to be a, a filler card for to upgrade his Golem and to get a small minion presence. But oh, he does the Air Flight this. The Air Propeller Scrap, so that's a decent target. Okay, see again, Dragon still he's got the bridges. He's keeping them so well, which is what you expect of a of cheap Milo deck. Like, uh, sorry, a cheap Apep deck like this. Oh, one of the AOBs got activated by the Curse or uh, the Dead Curse Bearer. That's just a bit unfortunate for the offensive value of the brother. I mean, Dragon's not doing anything about it, but he could capitalize spirit on it. Spirit on the, the Boom Buggy could be good, though. It's a very good target for the Spirit. Boom Buggy's like a counter card to his push, and now it's even stronger. Fireball, Boom Buggy's just going to laugh that off. It would have lived. I mean, it would have died, except it got a Spirit. So that Spirit just basically saved his Boom Buggy, and now yeah. it's going to get much more value on offense. And that other brother got to face, but just it was shielded that entire time. So really just not getting too much value from those. And these are 10 mana cards, uh, 5 mana each brother. So, and he, you know, you've got to be getting value from them. This game's on lockdown right now. Vitalski's just kind of cornered. Perk 3 stun lancers. Yes, oh. please. And Vitalski doesn't have a card that instantly... Oh, he has fireball. No, my bad. He has fireball. So he does have an answer to them, but it's still 4 mana for 0 if they stun lock his minions. Yeah, and of course if he's using the fireball on those, then he can't use the fireball on shutting down things like the boom buggy. But again, yeah. the wall yeah, that, is being so well shock used. Rock. I can missiles and shock rock and stop boom buggy, but a, a dragon can stop him from doing both of those plays Ooh, by just blocking the boom buggy. Okay. See, oh, that was it, so unfortunate. He used the unholy ground to bring it down, but it still died. It still got so much value off. The yeah, XP lead did. just looks like it's too strong right here. He, that is a decent last counter, but only if you can stop both hits, in my opinion. Otherwise, you're spending three mana to stop 200 damage on each brother. And that's... He has a lot of cards to counter brother, so I just don't think it's good enough to save the game. Yeah, those stun lances may have just... Uh, been the final nail in the coffin. He has a Cursed Ascension potential with the Unholy Ground, but it's only at 23. I don't yeah. think that's going to be happening this match. 23 out of 70 for the Souls, for those who don't know. You need 70 of Cursed Ascension to activate whatever power could be. Yeah, but I feel like even if he activated it, he wouldn't really get much of a benefit. You could hold Bridges. It's a very every, nice mana card. Okay? Every little would certainly help. But here we see it. Now he's got the fireball. Okay. Oh, but the, oh, the stun lance are just oh, surviving at the top. This could be a problem. The boom buggy's going to start wailing away on it. It's going to start hitting everything about the thing that it needs. But here we go. He's trying to shut it down. But the lash of our moon look in the wrong direction. Only gets one off. So that's a better trade there for sure. But ultimately that boom buggy down. with one HP just too strong. Yeah, now he has another one on the other side. But he can take it out with spells now. Batowski can. He has Shark Rock as his next code. He might do that. Low HP, Batowski as well. Looks like Dragon's just trying to control this, get some Mana Frenzy and close it out. If he takes this, yeah, he takes the tournament. He has a lead on every front that Batowski needs one push to win it all. Otherwise, he's going to be out of this. And his face damage is now, he's at 180 HP. So it's only getting worse. 
He's in the black hole there to try to force some extra value. There we go. Boom buggy. Shield just in time. We're on a frenzy though. Dragon should be able to just lock the bridges down and close this out. But these, that's a big golem at the bottom. It's almost dead. But this is a lot of face damage coming out on Dragon right now. 560. You saw... Yep, this is the push. Those but ravenous... It's, I don't think it's enough. Those ravenous swarmers. Wow. Do you think that was exactly it? Get mana frenzy. That was no, his... I think that was just one chance. But it didn't work out. He uh, doesn't have enough face damage. He's not getting any mana frenzy. So Dragon's going to win on this push. And that's going to be the tournament. Wow. Oh, we're going to get a lash finish? That'd be... You need, oh, it only does two damage. That's a bug. It should be doing 20. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. Maybe we'll have to uh, check that out. Uh, but that's it. Dragon's taken it. The Apep clean sweep. He was very surprised to find that Apep was going to be allowed to play. And uh, as soon as he saw that, he said thank you very much. Okay, Dragon yeah. has taken the best of five by three games to nil. He has... Um, he has won the tournament, um, and we can switch and check the decks that they played. Um, so Dragon did switch up a little bit. Uh, let's see what he changed. It looks like he got Warrior in there in place of something. Or was Warrior already in there? He has one less cheap code. Might be crossbow dudes that got removed. Let's have a look. Let's bring up the deck that he was using earlier. Okay, so... Another pass. It was Nether Bats. So he took out Nether Bats and put in the Warrior. Just felt like he wanted some, some extra meat in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Propeller Scrats and Nether Bats might not have been doing that much for him. So do you think this was just a, another case of Lash against Brothers just being an unfortunate uh, situation that Batowski found himself in? Not only that, but I think that Black Hole was so useless, it didn't do anything. You saw him try and play it to stop stun Lancers, but that was so little value, it just didn't have a place in this match. Yeah, sometimes... Uh, besides we... that... Yeah, go ahead. I, Lash, is, Lash was doing Lash things. I mean, it was almost taking out the Brothers completely for 5 mana, and that's Batowski's entire push, other than he can try and get a push up with his me uh, mediocre minions and his uh, Kingalem, but that's not nearly as pressuring, because those minions are a lot easier to answer than the Brothers are. Do you feel like the fact that uh, Dragon played Lash uh, previously, that Batowski should have just, you know, assumed that that may continue and not play a deck that's going to get quite so shut down by the Lash? I don't blame him for, t for going back to the brothers. It's a whole mind game situation where he countered Dragon with his last middle deck. And Lash, okay, it wasn't useless, but it was pretty bad. It wasn't like, you know, he wasn't getting great value from it. And I think he was hoping that from the mind game point of view, he would have then made Dragon take it out and had a better chance with brothers. But then Dragon just stuck with the same deck and it, it was the right move because Potaski went for brothers, probably hoping that Dragon was going to take out Lash. But instead, he was just put in the same situation that it was in game one. Okay, very nice. So, very good games. Uh, it did ultimately go 3-0, to zero, um, but both players did play very well. I don't think we have either of them available um, for any sort of an interview. Um, but that's no problem. So, that's the end of the tournament. Remember... These tournaments are monthly here in the Fish Tank, a 1v1 and a 2v2. We always try to watch the finals here on stream, get them on YouTube. So um, if you haven't, uh, if you didn't see all of this or you want to go back and revisit it or check out some of the other tournaments, then be sure to look out for the YouTube. Um, any videos that you're watching on my YouTube, any subscript, any if you hit the subscribe button, etc., that really helps. So um, many thanks for that. Um, Deadshot, do you have uh, any final words to say? Uh, to everybody, uh, to just to, to, to wrap up this tournament and, and how you and how you felt about the tournament and your experience casting it. Ban Apep. <laughs> That's and it, it was pretty it? fun. No, I'll talk more. It was good. It was good. The games were nice. They were all going to Mana Frenzy, which I personally find my favorite way to play. Lawn games, you know, you saw a lot of good plays from the players. It was constant, fast-paced action, and I think that. That's really good for learning the game when you have those intense matches and even if you lose you're putting up a good fight and you're probably you're probably going to get better at it you're going to get better at playing really fast making those key moment plays and even though batowski lost i'd say he had great matches and he gained more experience as well experience against dragon experience about you know what he should and shouldn't um 
ban. So, you know, all in all, a great experience for, for both players. Dragon's been there many times before. Vitalski, I'm sure, will see him yeah. again. Um, I'm sure he was frustrated that he wasn't able to play King Puff, but, you know, that's just Dragon's experience, knowing that he's a good King Puff player and removing that from uh, from the options. Now, I don't know if we have anything else to say, but just a big thank you to Beta Dwarf, the developer, for supporting this game. Minion Masters is free on Steam and on Xbox. We'll put a link in the description if you want to go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very free-to-play friendly as well. It's coming to mobile soon. Uh, we do have some other videos on the YouTube channel checking out the mobile version of the game, so if you want to check those out as well. Um, but yes, thank you so much for joining me, Deadshot. I think this is the first time no we've casted together like this. Um, and it's always it nice. Not be the best. To... Hopefully not. And it's always nice to get your view on things because you have been there and done this on the other side of things. You have a lot of tournament experience, a lot of game experience. So it's always good. To... I always learn a lot uh, talking to you and hopefully everyone at home and in the Twitch chat, etc. Um, learn you. a lot. Uh, so thanks a lot for your time. Um, my name's Badis Fish 80. This has been the Fish Tank. And we'll see you next time.